Pisces, welcome to your March 2019 Astro Alchemy with Raina Moon. This is a month of a Mercury retrograde in your sign Pisces. So that is very interesting because this is happening in your first house of the self. Mercury retrogrades are times for you to kind of review, in this case, how you come across to other people. And also, I think this is even more important because people tend to go how you come across. Well, some people might think something superficial, like the way you dress and the way you act when you first meet somebody. But I think also with Mercury itself in your sign, how you, how you like convey who you are. And Mercury is such a sign of the chameleon that uh, you guys, your mutable water sign, you're very impressionable when it comes to your environment. So you, you're very colored by the company you keep, the environment you're, you're in. So if you're in a raucous, noisy bar, you can be, you know, get down with the best of them. Or if you're in some kind of an ashram, you, you could be, you know, astral projecting. So, you know, is there something that is a core belief within yourself? Or do you tend to be easily influenced by other people and then to start to spout their kind of lingo, what they want to hear. So if you're in a certain audience, you kind of uh, tailor it to them, which makes sense to a certain degree in terms of like how people understand things, but not if you're trying to get people to understand who you are. So if, if I'm a public speaker and I have different types of audiences, it makes sense to kind of like uh, figure out where they're at and and come to them at their level, but not to change my message. So I think that's what I'm um, trying to get at is being consistent with the things that you say when you're speaking to others and how they really reflect upon you as an individual. So we start the month with Venus in Aquarius, and this is your... 12th house, which you rule. So this is very uh, comfortable for you, familiar to you, but a very private place for Venus to go. Before this, before this month begins, your Venus is in a very social place, the 11th house of friendships and groups that you belong to. And so there could be some of you before March who meet someone through your social circle but you decide to take the relationship private as things progress, as you begin the relationship, because you don't want, maybe you don't want other people chiming in, putting in their two cents, monitoring the pro uh, progress of your relationship. You just want to enjoy each other's company without outside scrutiny or things like that. When Venus is in the 12th house, this could be meeting somebody who is your soulmate, you know, for lack of a better other way of putting it, you know, and this is what a lot of Pisces people are looking for. They're looking for that person who is their perfect match. And so it's important to remember that even in so-called perfect relationships, there are imperfections, or I, I should say in terms of so-called great matches, there still will be areas where you and the other person are not on the same page. But definitely meeting somebody who could be like a soul type of relationship. That's why we say soulmate, because it's not a bedmate. It's not meeting somebody that you think is hot and you would like to have a physical relationship with. This is more than that. This is like taking it to the next level. And to me, you will know if that happens just intuitively. And this is a very intuitive house to say the least. Uh, it's also because it is connected with past lives. This is the, the karmic house. And a lot of times when we meet somebody that is 
a very, what I would call very karmic relationship. I know that sounds weird. It's like, there's a sense of familiarity. And I think what gets screwed up is that sometimes this familiarity is actually showing a relationship we have with somebody that is problematic, but it's been problematic for lifetimes. And so we think, oh, this must be my soulmate, because I also feel that uh, sense of the familiar or, you know, swirling around this person. And in fact, it's more of a, I am, I remember this person as someone from a past life who I tangled with then and I'm tangling with now. So you have to also differentiate between soulmates and I don't know what I call the other type. Maybe uh, some people might say a twin flame relationship is very challenging and you keep dealing with this this theme from lifetime to lifetime. I don't know about that. I'm not an expert on that. Uh, but just unfinished business, who knows? So that can feel very special, that type of love, if you happen upon it uh, for the first few weeks of the month. And then on the fifth, we have that Mercury retrograde. I know I had to note here that it's um, a 29 Pisces. So it's the last degree of Pisces. It's containing all the wisdom of this sign, all that you have learned since, since uh, Mercury has gone into Pisces. And Mercury is very quick moving. So I'm not saying it's the wisdom of the ages, but there may be something that has come about that will come about in the next few weeks that will help you to move forward in the best way possible for yourself as an individual. And I wanted to note too, that sometimes people discover that they have uh, people that they know from the past kind of coming up to the surface and uh, they're dealing with past relationships. Now, it doesn't have to be just a love relationship. You may hear from s somebody from that you haven't talked to, maybe a friend that you have been out of touch with for quite a while. And that's fun because uh, you may feel like is something got neglected and now you're back on track or they just might be popping in. But if it's somebody that is romantic, realize why you broke up in the first place and don't get suckered into being excited that that person is giving you the time of day again, especially if they were the one to end it. On the 6th, Uranus goes into Taurus as well as we have a new moon in your sign. Now, I forgot to just say happy birthday. I mean, uh, the month of March begins with your solar return continuing from, I guess, late February and your actual official solar return is your birthday. So at the time of the new moon in Pisces, this is right after Mercury goes retrograde. So it may feel weird to set new moon intentions, but do it anyway, because even if uh, you're not really acting on it. You're just kind of putting it into the universe. And um, you. it's almost like I had this image of taking, you know, those messages that they tie to balloons and you write a message and then you like just like let go of the balloon and see where it lands. So you're not um, necessarily directing it in one area or the other because there is, like right now, um, because of the Mercury retrograde, there may be this feeling that things are unsettled. And also, even with um, the eclipses back in January, um, I'm recording this in February, and I feel like they're still like really, you know, not, I was going to say resonating, but that's not what the word I wanted. It was like, I'll just say they were still affecting, they are seem to still be affecting some of us. And at least it feels that way to me. And in March, you may feel that there is stuff happening with yourself that feels unsettled since you have the Mercury retrograde in your sign. So it may not feel like the best time 
to set intentions, but do so anyway, knowing that it may take a different turn. The balloon may float in a different direction, but it will still be a message sent to the universe and wherever it lands, maybe that's where you need to be. In terms of Uranus in Taurus, um, this is a time of um, change in the area of, for you, the third house of teaching and learning communication. So Uranus is also, I'm, I'm sorry, the third house is also our, the way that we think, you know, the mental process that we undergo. And so this could be that you are starting to study uh, subjects that have a esoteric bent to them or some kind of like metaphysical, psychic, um, like astrology. You may be studying astrology, uh, which is associated with Aquarius and its ruler Uranus. So uh, this is a um, tech tech type of an influence with Uranus technology may enter into your life in a big way in the next seven years. Okay. You did have a taste of Uranus in, in Taurus back in May. I don't know how long it, it lasted, but not too long. And uh, then it went back into your second house of earned income. Well, here's a good thing. Uh, now you can put Uranus to rest in that second house. Pisces, maybe you've had some scattered earning capacity for the last almost decade. And you right now you have Jupiter in your 10th house of career. So you're and you had Saturn there before Jupiter for a few years. So um, that may have been good for establishing yourself professionally. But perhaps there were remnants of kind of like here, there and everywhere type of uh, income streams. Maybe um, in some cases it could be like working several jobs and kind of piecework type of income or, you know, especially if it's those kinds of jobs like retail where you are maybe like your hours change. You don't make as much week to week. It's not like a solid job. Well, now you should have more stability in your income. Let me put it that way. Uranus can, is associated with instability. So I could have just put it like that. But now in the third house, I think Uranus will function much, much better. It will make um, you capable of implementing technology in order to communicate. So maybe this is even um, if you own a business, you decide to go on YouTube to promote your business, depending on what it is, obviously, and get, you know, try to figure out what they call guerrilla marketing techniques. Uh, you know, it's funny uh, when people spell it like uh, G-O-R, <laughs> not like the primate, but um, it's just um, marketing tactics that are, you know, out of the box but in this case, trying to reach the masses, you know, Uranus rules the 11th house of the collective, the masses, in, in, in a way that uses, utilizes technology. And it's kind of funny because we think, well, gosh, you know, the Internet has been around for how many years in, in a very mainstream way? I would say about 20 years. Um, <laughs> I think I had my first Yahoo account in 2000. Or maybe 1999, I can't remember. Wow. I mean, in a way, it's been a long time. In a way, it's not, you know. And um, it, just on a side note, I remember I went back to college uh, as an adult, uh, as a mature adult in the um, late 90s. Yeah, like about 1999. So that's what, why I'm saying that that was when I first started using the Internet. And I remember even then they were like, even into the 2000s, they were allowing assignments uh, that were using word processors. So, I mean, if you remember the old word processors that were like typewriters, but then when they printed things out, it was like this, oh my gosh, how loud it was. It was just pretty intense. 
So in any case, um, there might, you know, I can't say how this will work out for you. It might just be the subject matter you're studying, or maybe you're even teaching something that is metaphysical. Uh, maybe you're starting a YouTube channel because you're psychic or you're, you're, you talk to angels and you want to do a, um, you want to like do like readings on YouTube or something like that. So that's happening. I like the fact that it is on the same day as your new moon. Although you may be tempted to like just jump right in. And if you feel like called to do so, you can just realize that um, starting new things during a Mercury retrograde, it is thought to be not the best time, but I'm not going to just, uh, you know, insist upon it because I, I believe in just our own personal alchemy. <laughs> On the 20th, this is, I think, a pretty significant turning point because the sun goes into Aries. This is astrological new year. So this is your second house of earned income. Very good for Pisces because, you know, now the emphasis is on your earning capacity and you might have a uh, nice, uh, some nice uh, energy poured in there, uh, especially come April and the new moon in, in this house, new opportunities in this area. But there's also a full moon on the same day at zero degrees of Libra. So to me, that's almost like a new, uh, a new moon itself. Now, this is in your eighth house. The eighth house is other people's money, so shared resources. It's also the house of death, the house of sex, of, um, you know, the, it's interesting. It is the house of metaphysics. And, you know, the death angle is what, what is the meaning of life? It's the house of secrets. So this could be like the full moon could expose some secrets here, but I think there could be some angle with inheritance, maybe even secrets about inheritance. And I'll get to that in a second. So on the 20, uh, by the way, so it could make you aware that there is an inheritance issue. It's not necessarily that somebody will die on that, in that time frame, but that you are made aware of the death. Maybe this is somebody that is not, that you have not been in contact with a family member. And then you realize that they had a will or something like that. Uh, on the 26th, Venus goes into Pisces, into your sign. Okay, so it's going from that 12th house now in the first house. This is just great for general well-being uh, because Venus is the attractor. So you can attract good things to you. Venus in Vedic astrology is called a um, benefic planet, you know, beneficial, you know, that's the best way, but, uh, you know, like a positive influence. And while I don't agree with Vedic astrology in that regard, in terms of one thing is positive, one thing is negative, I will say that I do think it's nice to have Venus in the first house, because if you're looking for a job or you're looking for a mate, people might be more receptive to you. They might think, Hey, you know, I want to help this person. I want to really, I want to make uh, them succeed at whatever it is that they're looking for. On the 28th, Mercury goes direct at 16 degrees of Pisces. So if you know what degree your, um, sun sign or rising sign is in. And I should also state this is for the rising sign as well. Um, that's also helpful. And uh, so something kind of clicks for you at the end of March where you know, okay, this is how I'm going to proceed. Um, you may be reviewed, you know, the first house you know, is specifically about the body. So it, it could even have a dietary connection, I guess, in some ways, because Mercury does rule both the third house and the sixth house of health. So Mercury is connected to diet. So maybe you are looking at your body and saying, how can my diet influence it? And maybe you're kind of like researching during the month and you decide, okay, this is the direction I'm going to go in to best have the, you know, the, the kind of diet that 
where I can see the results that I'm looking for. But I also think that it is just kind of like, since it's the first house, it's setting the table, setting the stage for all of the houses in terms of how they relate to, um, how all of your life is right now and how your thinking patterns can reflect, you know, what has happened in your life. Pisces is, I, you know, I would look at your Mercury sign too, to see how that influences you. But in general, Pisces is a sign that sometimes is, feels like totally in touch with the cosmos and very inspired and sometimes is pessimistic and feeling victimized by life. So by, by really examining your thoughts and examining how, this is what I was saying before, your thoughts as well as what you say about yourself. And those are your thoughts. You may not say it out loud, but you may say it to yourself, negative uh, messages that you send to yourself, or even like it could be verbal that you put yourself down you know, within, you know, with, uh, when you're around other people and that is not going to leave a good impression on those people because you have to be your own best cheerleader. And hopefully you will be able to see this towards the end of the month. On the 31st, Mars goes into Gemini. So Mars has been in Taurus in that third house. Again, you may have been for most of the month with Mars and Taurus, really setting something up, uh, working on some technological thing, a blog or a, um, you know, a YouTube channel. And you're really, you, you're waiting to launch, or maybe you do launch, uh, in Gemini. It almost be like, um, the perfect time because Mercury has gone direct. He hasn't gone out of its shadow yet, but still, um, and Mars is going into Gemini, which rules that third house of communication. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's getting a little bit inside baseball, but still, um, but anyway, so the third house is also the house of siblings and the fourth house that Mars goes into on the 31st is the mother and family of origin in general. And Mars is the God of war. So, Going back to what I was talking about with the full moon in Libra in that eighth house, it is possible that there is some kind of conflict between you and family members over a will. Now, the other, th the other thing that the third house represents is cousins. I think an aunts and uncles or something like that. So if this has to do, maybe you have had an aunt or uncle pass away recently and it is connected to the mother. It's the mother's uh, brother or sister. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be that. I'm just wanting to tie it in with that full moon because sometimes these things do create rifts in the family when there is inheritance and not just out of greed. I mean, of course, greed definitely can play into it, but it can be this sense of betrayal. Like if, if you felt like, you were left out of something and even deceived because Pisces, again, going back to that idea of being victimized and Pisces, you know, you are the sign that is associated with um, sometimes feeling that way. You may be the, the, the scapegoat in your family of origin that, you know, if you, if you know about the different, um, different positions given to people. It's, it's highly possible because the more I learn about all this stuff, the more I think that the empaths, the people who are the most sensitive and the most caring, they are the ones that tend to be the scapegoats because the other people are out of touch with their emotions and they know that you are a good person and they can't, they know that they are not, that they are full of a lot of darkness. And so they will project their filth onto you uh, and, and try to do whatever they can to cause pain. 
So I'm not denying that you may have gone through some stuff in your life. The point is you do not want to identify with victimhood. You, what you want to do is you want to see them for who they are, not allow them to continuously victimize you. I think with water signs, family is almost sacred. And it's very hard to admit if there are people who are uh, kind of almost like secret enemies, but not really even secret. They're not even secret about it. They're, they're pretty open about it. And they happen to be parents or brothers and sisters or cousins. If your cousins are like your siblings, you know, and it's all about love, you know? So when Mars is here, there can be conflict. So you can still see how they've exposed themselves and you can take note of that. So if something comes out around the time of that astrological new year, around the time of the 20th, just instead of like, you know, going off on them or going, uh, going into a frenzy emotionally, this is a great time to really, you know, prepare for what you're going to do about this. Because this may be something that has been hidden from you for a long time. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to happen the same way for everybody. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to speak on something specific. Because with Mars transiting the houses of siblings and, and uh, especially the mother in the fourth house. But you could just say, some people think the father is the fourth house. So there you go. But um, let's just say family of origin. You may be... Um, a little bit uh, pissed off. I, I can't say it any more um, delicately than that. And you may feel like somebody has um, betrayed you, fooled you, and you want to, uh, you know, tell them off. But take it from somebody who has Mars and Capricorn in my natal chart. Be like a military strategist where you are going to really decide ahead of time how you're going to handle this particular instance. And, you know, this could also be like if you're having a war with your neighbors or if there's some kind of a conflict with your neighbors, maybe you didn't even start it. Um, don't spread gasoline on the fire. That's what I would say about any of this stuff. If some If conflict is coming to you, because I don't think you're the type of people to really like start things, you know, they have that saying, you start it, I'll finish it for you. Well, finish it for them in a different way, not with any kind of, you know, craziness, but finish it with a sense of calm and knowing, knowingness that you have finally figured them out. They've, you know, shown their butts and now you know what you're going to do about it. And be like a, a strategist of like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And and kind of like look at it as a game that you're going to, like if, if, let's say there is some kind of inheritance thing and it's actually, they are being totally uh, underhanded about something. You might not want to let them know that you know. If you found out from some other person, you might not want to go and confront them and say, I know that you stole the money from blah, blah, blah. You know, you might want to consult a lawyer. You might want to do something on your own so that you can uh, have that, that element of surprise. So, um, yeah, it's, it's something that is very interesting, uh, what you might be going through. If it's not anything of the above, I mean, Mars could simply be that you're, when it's in the third house, you're taking lots of trips around the, the hood and then maybe you're like going to different local suburbs because you want to move. And when it's in the fourth house, uh, you're doing a lot of packing, a lot of activity within the home. Uh, Mars can even in the fourth house can be that you're, you're uh, building something or tearing it down, like an addition to the home or whatever, getting some kind of like renovation in the home. Oh, <laughs> okay. Pisces. Um, so that's what I have for you. I hope that you have a great birthday month. If you'd like a, a natal chart reading for your upcoming 
uh, year, solar year, uh, please um, check down below. I can hook you up with a, a reading in that sense. And um, good luck to you. Take care. Bye.